everyone and welcome back to the Crafts America YouTube channel. It's Erica with you today and today we are going to be using the Lavender Whimsy stencils and yes we're definitely going to use the dye as well but um, we're going to put this aside for now and then we are going to get our inks out actually before we do anything else. So I, I had originally planned to do this in pinks but then the one trick pony came out. <laughs> and um i decided to go for a rainbow so we are going to use my go-to pink fresh inks uh in grassy knoll aquamarine blue jay lavender sparkling rose apricot and sunshine so what we're going to do is we're going to take our stencil number one and we are going to, actually, we're going to do it the simple way. We're going to add it to the card base first, or the card stock. And then we're going to line up the stencil on top of that after. That corner, and that corner, and that corner, and that corner. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our very, very many blending brushes, if you're a lunatic like me. Uh, and we're going to just make sure that they are all in their corresponding color. And then this is going to sound a bit crazy. But whenever I use colors like this, I do always start with the lightest color, whether the yellow is going to be in the middle or whether it's going to be at the bottom. I always start with whatever color is the lightest because it's most likely to get muddled. So we're going to start with this one at the bottom and we're going to go in with quite a light hand. We don't want to be too crazy heavy here. And then we're going to go very lightly up into where the apricot is going to go so you get a really nice blend. Now don't put this away right away. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go in with our apricot and we're gonna start with whatever ink is left on the, the lid. And we're gonna do the soft blend here over that yellow, like so. And by doing it this way, you will avoid harsh lines. So if you are a newbie to ink blending, this is a great tip that will just save you a little bit of frustration in the beginning. And um, it was probably one of the biggest frustrations I had in the beginning with the uh, ink blending. Just, you know, getting the colors to move together without getting those harsh lines. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go in with a little bit more yellow. And we're going to tap off the excess on the lid here. And we're going to just gently go over that again. Like so and now we can put the lid on this one because we're not going to be needing that one for a little while and then we're going to move on to our pink and again we're going to tap 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 and then light hand i'm going to go over get that pink onto this part and then what we're going to do, we're going to angle the brush a little bit. So instead of holding it flat, we're going to angle it slightly. So if you look like that. So normally you would ink blend like this. What we're going to do, we're going to angle it just a little bit. And we're going to blend into that color. So the sparkling rose and the apricot are going to, when we're finished, blend seamlessly together. I am going to speed this up just a little bit. So this is just double speed. So it's not crazy, crazy fast. I just wanted to really show you the first part in real time. And that, you know, it's not a process that's going to take you ages and ages and ages. It will take a little bit longer than if you're doing one color, you know, per flower. Though, you know, this is just something I thought I'd just show you something fun because I absolutely... I mean, I, yeah, I know I'm a, I'm a rainbow holic and um, I, I'm not, I'm never going to stop. So 
I thought, you know what, I am going to try to convert more people to this rainbow blending. So here we are. Now you can see here, I am going back and forth with my colors to get the seamless blend. So this is, again, I'm probably going to say it more than one time in this video, but patience and blending is R two key ingredients to seamless blending. So you do have to be a little bit patient. You have to go back and forth with your colors and, you know, blend those colors together. But here you can see it's our first um, layer. And then I actually had the thought, you know what, we are going to give this a little bit of time to dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on the second part of the, the flower foliage thing. So we're actually going to do the leaf section next. And we're going to try to keep the colors. So you can see we're going to go with the colors that are already on the flower. So we're going to do just, we're going to start with pink right at the, uh, the bottom there. And then we're going to go into our lavender, our blue jay. And then here we're going to introduce aquamarine and grassy knoll. So that the top of the foliage leaf are going to be grassy knoll. And then it's going to, it's not going to be perfectly all in one um one sort of blend from one part to another but i think with the the design of the the leaves and the, the flowers there are you know obviously two separate pieces but in one image you do want to have a little bit of a kind of an edge between this so it's not just kind of a a big rainbow blob if that makes sense so here we're just gonna, um, we're actually going to start with our, um, our grassy knoll at the top and leave a little bit of space in between the blue jay and the grassy knoll. And the reason for this is because when you blend green into blue, it will kind of be aquamarine anywhere, turquoise. But I really wanted that green to be on its own. You know, you want to be able to see the green. You want to be able to see the blue. And then it's going to seamlessly merge into the turquoise kind of in between. So that's why I did the green first and then the aquamarine. But here I'm just kind of going in a little bit more like around the edges. Because again, I want to have a little bit of separation between the flower themselves because there's two lots of flowers there or three even and the foliage so we wanted to add just a little bit kind of you know to add those distinctions and the details and then we are going to just finish off with a little bit of pink here at the bottom because I did notice that it was just a little bit pale so now we have got our leaves and our um uh, like our first layers done on both of them and now we will start on basically stencil number two. So we have done stencil number one and stencil four. Now we're back to number two. So we are going to go um, in with our second layer of color. And this time you're gonna wanna go a little bit more heavy handed. So this is where we're wanting to add in the details and you know, getting all of those, like the actual build of the flower. So depending on what, whether you want like a really soft pastel color, if you want a soft pastel color, just go in with a light hand again, but just maybe leave a little bit of time in between each of the layers again, a little bit more time than it takes to do the other part of the flower. So it could even be a good idea to maybe get your heat tool out if you have one of those and just dry it off a little bit in between as well to really kind of let the ink settle. And then the next layer of ink will not kind of bleed out and you won't lose all of those details because, you know, the whole point of layering stencils is to add details. So now you've seen as well that uh, I have switched to my itty bitty brushes. And the reason for this is because I want to get into all of these little nooks and crannies. And I also want to have a little bit more control of where my color go. And in between my lavender and the blue jay, I will be cleaning off my stencil a little bit because I don't want to get too much lavender into my blue brush. So here I am actually using my big brush because in this little part here, I don't have to worry so much about where the color is going above because that's the lost color. So um, I will be going back and forth with my big ones and my little ones. It is always I say always, it's not always, but um, for me, it is super, super handy to have both uh, small brushes and uh, big brushes. But now 
Uh, here is our first layer done. You can see it is really, really kind of like, you know, starting to come to life. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our, uh, so this is stencil number five, actually. So it's the second stencil for your foliage. And uh, I originally have planned on doing this whole video in real time but it ended up being nearly half an hour. <laughs> so I thought, you know what, I'm going to spare you all of that. And that is why you might see a little bit of random hand gesturing and stuff, because I am in the original footage explaining something and uh, using my hands. I'm like speaking Italian with my hands, uh, basically. But um, we are just going to finish off the uh, last little bit here. Um, again, you can see I'm going in with my little brushes and for the foliage again, I've gone with the green first, so gone pink, lavender, blue jay, and then we're gone grassy knoll and back down into aquamarine. And this is our final layer for the uh, actual flowers themselves. So here we're gonna go in really, really quite like kapow, add that color, because these are the little nooks and crannies and are gonna kind of give you your image depth and definition. So here, don't be shy about adding your color. Unless, of course, you're going down your sort of pastel-y route. Then, again, a light hand, but make sure you dry your layers in between. So for this bit here, there's also a little bit of a stem that is hanging down uh, right at the uh, corner here. You can see I'm just kind of masking off using one of the stencils, actually. And I'm only using leftover black ink on one of these Edie Beauty brushes. And I didn't think that it was going to be enough, but lo and behold it was just enough to kind of give a little bit of uh, or you know give the the details basically there was just one teeny tiny little bit here i needed to add a little bit more ink onto and with that it was done now i did say in the beginning i was going to uh, use the die cut but i decided actually i am going to leave it as it is because it turned out even more amazing than i had planned so on top of this and because it seems like such a shame to cover that up, I decided to splatter it with gold paint. Yes, I am thoroughly on the one <laughs> trick of pony bandwagon. But I mean, it just looks so beautiful. And I thought, you know what, sometimes, you know, less is more. So I decided to cut this down just a little bit so that it is just slightly, slightly smaller than the four and a quarter and five and a half. And then I wanted to use this uh, Sentiment Sweet Hello from Pinkfresh Studio. Not the shadow bit, just the uh, actual word die. And this I cut out of a piece of gold cardstock that I basically wanted to back my card with. So that I have gold frame and then a gold hello on top. So I decided um, to keep the hello at the bottom rather than the top, even though I, it looks like I, I wanted to put it on the top there. But I decided it, it would just go nicer at the bottom there. But now looking at it, I'm thinking maybe I should have gone at the top. But what do you think? I would love to hear. And uh, that is it from me for today. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you like this video and don't forget to subscribe to the Crafty Meraki YouTube channel and I will see you very, very soon again. Bye for now.